Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Today on the channel, we're going to make a handle for this axe head. It's not going to be a standard full length axe handle. It's going to be a shorter axe handle, about that long. The reason I want to make a shorter handle uh, for this axe head is I want to use it on close up work for when you're chipping away and taking a knot off or taking just a short bump off a log or whatever you want to use it for, trimming down things, etc. I've got several hatchets and uh, tomahawks, and yes, they are good, but I wanted to do one with a full side axe head, but I needed a short handle so I had better control over that head. So come along with me today, I'm glad to have you along. If you're a first time viewer, my name's Arthur, I'm so thrilled to have you along to the channel, hope you enjoy it. Alright, so the type of handle we're going to do today involves just a few tools. Now you can do it with pretty well all hand tools if you want to or you can do it using a router and some rafts, a jigsaw or if you've got a band saw you can use that too um, you will need some means to trim down some timber so cut it down and size it to a thickness so if you've got a thickness that's handy too if you haven't you might have to cut it down on your band saw and hand plane it um, there's several ways you could do the preparation of the stock before we actually shape the handle the handle I'm showing you is a very basic type of handle, but they are practical and I found they last well. This one here is on a short hatchet and um, it's quite well. And it's a nice long handle, usually they would be about this long, but I made this one a little bit longer so you get a bit more space if you want to use it. And it works quite well. This is here is a worn down full size axe, which is about three quarters down, so this is about three quarters ahead. I would have done this handle many years ago for my boys uh, when they were younger to use and of course I've done some other axe full size handles and this is uh, an axe I use at work and um, this I probably made <laughs> probably close on 25 years ago this handle I'm just using a router and um, some other tools that I had and rasped it down and uh, basically profiled it and since then I've got better tools to use, but that handle's still going well. And I use it, I actually have my tree lopper, I do tree lopping and that uh, for my work. But I actually use it where I have to cut away some roots or something, or chip away some dirty bark or whatever. Don't use it a terrible lot, but it does get use at work um, for that process. So I have it in my work vehicle uh, to do that. It's just a simple old plumb axe head, but it does the job well. <coughs> So that one's been many years ago too. I have another axe um, that I made these covers out of some old uh, leather that I had. They were actually off uh, flaps off a saddle and I just made them they're quite simple. And this is a, a braid's head. It's quite a, quite a good axe head. And uh, I made this one too. And if you notice the end profile there, it spreads it quite well. It's a good grip. Now that's the secret with these little handles, okay, see how it maintains the same thickness all the way along. So the grip comes from the wideness of this part here, not from the wideness of here. A manufactured axe handle would go wider here as well. So today I'm just going to show you how to make one of this style, and I'll point out some things that are, I believe are necessary in choosing your timber even. All right, things to look for. Once you've selected a wood that you know is satisfactory to use on an axe handle. Now I say that because some of you are watching from different countries and there'll be wood in your country that I don't have in mine. I'm in Australia. Um, so there'll be wood in your country that you have heard is satisfactory for handle making. Now if you don't know what that wood is, I suggest you ask somebody at your hardware store or your timber or lumber supplies um, what sort of timber you should use now if you watch some of my videos before you know I like the Australian gums they're a hardwood and specifically I like a spotted gum now if you're in America I've heard that hickory is very good uh, for uh, handles of different sorts in fact uh, you used to get American hickory axe handles out here in Australia sold as uh, an axe handle for you to fit to a head out here. So I've heard hickory is good. 
I've heard some different types of fruit trees uh, are quite good for axe handles too because of the, the strength they have in them. But typically you want something with a nice long grain uh, that has that strength and that length of the grain. Now, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, now when you pick a timber, I tend to pick a timber with the grain running like this not a crosswise. Now the reason that is, um, I believe you get more strength out of the grain on its edge like that for an axe or a sled shimmer or a hammer handle because the impact is against this part here. When it's sideways, I'll explain that now, when it's sideways on an axe handle especially, this part of an axe handle sometimes cops a flogging, it cops a real hiding uh, when it comes to and some real abuse and sometimes if the grain is uh, not this way but this way that will actually weaken that spot there and it'll actually splinter away or sort of like barber chair away it splinters away uh, and it'll damage your handle and I've noticed that over the years on not only axe handles but sledgehammer handles different other hammer handles uh, that will splinter away but axe handles specifically if you have the grain running this way, it will splinter away. It, well, it seems to splinter away. Now, in saying that, uh, this piece of timber here, now see if you can see the grain. You see how the grains go around? Now, the hardwood would have been here. Now, I would avoid this particular piece of timber because it's close to the hardwood, yes. But not only that, uh, the grain is more, more crossways. Uh, to what I want, so it, I'd, I'd find it would splinter away. And you can even see the cracks coming out from it now uh, on the end grain here, how it would go. So I would avoid that. I would go for grain on, a, say, a, an angle that big, say a 30 degree angle across it. Uh, I'd accept that. From 45 onwards, I'd accept. And But this is not 45. In fact, as you get further over here, it's probably more acceptable. It's more 45, but it's it's very tight near the hardwood, so you really wouldn't want that. You want it more a straighty shoot of grain. But ideally, this is my own personal view. Ideally, uh, you want your grain, excuse me, running uh, the direction of the impact. So, axe head is going to go like that there. Excuse me. The axe head's going to go like that, so grain goes like that. Right here, now this is my piece of timber. I could have some fun here because there is a couple of nail holes in this timber. Now they might be shallow holes because it's a second hand old uh, piece of framing off an old building, I'd say, but it's good seasoned timber. And on the edge here, it's got a little bit of dry rot. So I think I'll be able to cut that out. Don't think there's a problem there. So I need to coordinate it so my head is dodging all this rubbish. Uh, the head, the handle part where it goes through the eye of the head. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure my head of my axe and work it and determine how thick I want to make my stock first. So I measure the eye first. And the eye is roughly seven eighths. At the widest point, seven eighths wide at the widest point for the timber, and the depth of the handle is nearly two and a half inches or 62 millimeters. I measure both ends, okay, that's fine, it's fairly equal that head. So the next thing I have to do is cut this down to size. Now I'll start off and I'm going to take it to a little bit over 7 8 So I'll probably take it to 24 millimeters or just under 1 inch. So I'll cut it down on my saw bench here to roughly 1 inch. And then I'll put it through my thickness and plane it. Now if you haven't got a, a saw bench or whatever, the supplies where you get your timber from or your piece of timber for your handle from they might be willing to cut it down on some of these places you've got little saw benches and thicknesses 
if you get a stock piece of one inch thick board they might run it through for you to the thickness you want so what I'll do first now is I'm going to rip this down to roughly one inch thick uh, so it's this thick and then I think this way we're pretty close to the right measurement straight up yeah very good it's about 68 millimeters so I've got enough to play with this way and it's been dressed a bit that way so that's good just enough all right so let's do that now I'll probably go to voiceover from here on uh, due to we've got a bit of rain around the moment and uh, it's it's uh, pretty hard to hear myself think let alone my speech because we've got a tin roof in our shed If you haven't got a saw bench or thickness, you might be able to get a bit of stock one inch thick timber in this case and cut it down to size on the larger side and then plane it down by hand either with electric planer or a hand plane. It will take time. Uh, obviously a thickness is quicker but um, I know some people haven't got that and you can work it down by hand. Here I'm marking out the position of the head and allowing a little bit of stick through at the top. Now onto the marking out stage. Here you'll see me marking it out. I'll mark the top section first. And then I have to figure out how the bottom part of the handle, or the end of the handle, this grip part, goes in. So it took me a little bit of time to figure that out. So I marked that out as well. Okay, I've sized it down to the size. I've gone over the thickness. So instead of being just 7 8 I'm a little bit over 7 8 or 22 millimetres. I'm about 20, 23 and a half. So it's only about a millimetre or a sixteenth bigger. A little bit over a sixteenth bigger. Now I've just used an old axe handle as a profile. And I'll just zoom out so you can get sort of a bit, bit of a picture. So I've used the old axe handle. Placed it on there, allowed enough to go through the eye or, or the head, more than enough, see? And on this end of the handle too, I'm, I'm going to allow a little bit more there too. I actually do that as one of my last things. So then I've blended that in, and I'm guessing I can hold it there then, or there. I want to make it sort of so I can hold it comfortably. I don't want it much longer than that. I could possibly even go shorter if I wanted to. Because I want it easy to handle. But I think that will be fine. I, I think so, because I'm grab it here or here. Okay, I've decided to go a little bit shorter. About an inch and a quarter shorter. Just by just getting a rough feel in my hand, what it could feel like. How close I want the head to my hand. And I think I'm better off going a bit shorter for what I want to do. Now it's off to cut this down. Now you could cut this down either with a jigsaw or with a band saw. You could use a coping saw to cut it down because it's only 7 8 thick. It would be slow going but you can cut it down. You could shape it down and chip away with a little hatchet and then you know, draw a knife and mark, uh, cut it down that way if you wanted to to get the shape. The first thing I'm going to do is get that shape out. And then we're going to make the profile of the head next. And then we uh, use the router to profile the handle. Cut the wedge. Fit the wedge. And um, cut the wedge slot, for it, sorry. And fit the, the wedge. So we're just going to go through now. And we'll cut this profile out. I'm going to use an old pattern saw or machine jigsaw. 
and a, a table type and then uh, we'll cut that out and then we'll just give that a bit of a clean up either with a spoke shave or in my case a spindle sander and we'll keep going from there Okay, as you can see, I have uh, this is this is all waste. Uh, this is where the line actually goes. So I'll cut that off later. Okay, I'll just leave that for the time being, for the fitting of the handle, etc., things like that. Once it comes to the last fitting, I'll trim that off um, and uh, make it nice and neat. That little nail hole is into about there. I think when we do the profile on it, we'll get rid of that. Maybe a little nick there might be a bit of a nuisance. But structurally, it's not going to affect the strength of the handle, I don't believe. And the rest of it's quite good. Uh, quite good timber. Now we're going to go and see in it. I'm going to make a template for this eye now because this is the next process we're up to is to make that eye shape on the handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it. I did have a template for a standard head but this one actually is a little bit shorter this eye but wider which is not a problem. So what I'll do is I'll mark out that eye and I'll show you how I do that. I get a bit of cardboard and I do this just like cutting a gasket and once I've done that, see you get a, a mark on it I cut that out, now I'm going to cut that to the inside of the line because that's stretched a bit Then once I've done this I'll cut out a timber one of these and uh, I've got a whole heap of templates that I've done over the years and I'll, I'll um, put it with them templates while I'm at it I might fold that in half and that'll give us a center line too there we go that center line that gives me a center line for fitting it. Okay, so I've cut that out roughly and sanded a bit. Because it's pine, I'm just going to tap it into the eye a bit, and that's going to give us a final sanding mark to sand it to. Okay, you mightn't be able to see that. You just see a little crease mark. I'll sand to that now. Okay, next step. Next step is marking the eye. This is the template we just made onto there. Now, as you can see, I've put a center line. Uh, not too much light around today. The center line is on there. And I've already marked with the marking gauge a center line on our head end of the handle. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to centralise that on our piece of wood. I'm going to centralise it both ways, this way and this way. So once I've centralised it, I'll mark the mark uh, in and around that so we can start working on that profile. And you should end up with a mark on the, it's very hard to see in this light. It's actually darker in real life. There we go. You should end up with a mark. Right now the next, <coughs> excuse me, the next thing I'm going to do is the orientation of my head. I'm going to put the, I think this is a two, two kilo head or a four pound head. So I'm going to put the mark downwards. I think that's the right profile. It's a fairly well equal balanced, sorry. It's a fairly well equal balanced head. And as a thus consequence, uh, there's no particular top or bottom to the head. But in the past, and no, they put markings underneath, so I put the markings down. So that's the way I'm going to orientate it with the marking down. I'm going to put that on there and orientate where I want the head to sit. Once I've done that, I'm going to put a mark. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to put a mark just roughly where the top of my head is, roughly where the bottom of my head is. There we go. Now, I'll go down from that mark there. I'm going to transfer a line down. If you can see that, I'm going to take the distance off the back there. I'm going to transfer that line down there. That's the back of my head. And I'm going to do the same on the front side. Front side's done too. And I'll go and cut those. And clean those up nice and straight and parallel and then it's on to cutting this profile here on the end of the head and that's what we should end up with after I've cut that profile after I've cut the um, sides down that resists the handle from going through the head that little part there I do this in several passes to get the right profile and I check the profile as I go along. The noise you hear in the background when I stop is actually monsoonal rain. Uh, we are having a fairly heavy lot of it at the moment. We've actually had about 18 inches in just under three days actually. I do this in several passes, as I said, adjusting the height as I go until I get it right. Alternatively, now I'm using an overhead router here because I've got it. But alternatively, you can use a router table. You can use a handheld router if you've got a good base on it, which I've done before. You just have to clamp it well down to a bench, uh, sorry, down well to a bench, and then uh, take your time to do it properly. Uh, in a previous video, I showed you how to make a little simple router table using a piece of plywood you could use that too so there's many ways around this but you do really need a router unless you want to spoke shape every profile or work every profile by hand this is the quickest way to go So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a 5 16 round over bit down as close as I can to that corner, as close as I can to there. So I'll stop this top radius right on the pencil mark. Then all I have to do is profile this with a file or a rasp or some sandpaper to that curve there. It's, I'm just removing the bulk by taking this corner off with a smaller bit. I'm going to do that on the router table. You can do that with a handheld router, and I'll show you that in a second. 
Okay, I must have bust, bumped the camera, I didn't realise. But I used a 5 16 round over a bit and I took it right down to there. Now the profile is not exactly 5 16, so I'll have to do that little bit of trimming by hand. But what this does, it removes that bulk bit on the corner. All I have to do now is shape that off. I can use a spoke shave or something else just to shape that off now to get that profile. I've always been meaning to buy a, a, a big um, profile bit that does that sort of radius, but I haven't got around to doing that yet. Okay, as you can see, I've test fitted it and driven it in just to see what it fits like. It gives me a guide what to go to. So I start uh, using a rasp here to rasp it down uh, to that size. And then I test and refit and test and refit and rasp and spoke shave and shape it down. I like a snug fit of a handle inside an axe head. I don't lock it sloppy. Um, and you'll see as I go, I'll just fast forward through most of this. It's pretty repetitive sort of stuff. But uh, I think you'll get the basic gist uh, by the footage of what you, you do. And we'll go with that. The glossy bit near the rasping area is where I've driven it into the head and that's how deep it's gone and that's my guide now. As I got into the centre of the head it got a bit tighter you know, just from the manufacturing of the head it's a little bit smaller in the middle. I cut the slot in it and I drive it again just to see how it goes and then I take it out and uh, I use that as my guide again. Now I'm going to round over the bulk of the handle and fit it to the head. After rounding it over, I did fit it to the head, but I wasn't hap happy with the thickness of the handle at this point. So I thinned it down at this point to make it more of a comfortable grip. 
Um, I've got fairly large hands, but even this was too fat for me, this part of the handle, to hold it one-handed, because it'll be used in one-handed use. After cutting it thinner, I uh, took it over the spindle sander and just gave it a bit of a quick sand and clean up and I will take it back to the overhead router to the, do the round over on the edges again. So here you see me fitting the wedge. I do use glue. It's a uh, just put a, a glue down in the slot. I wipe it down into the slot, the, the saw uh, slot that is. Then I drive it in equally. You can put a block of wood on top of this and drive it in as one piece. These are fairly strong wedges that I use, and they tend not to split. So that's pretty good. But then once I've got it in nice and tight this way, I do tip it upside down uh, and hammer it in from the other end too. So it does drive it an equal. I then go on to trim it uh, off a little bit. I leave a little bit protruding through the head. I tend to like that on my axis. Here you see me trimming the grip part of the handle. I did it several times because uh, I'm not happy with it. So I mark it yet, cut it, mark it yet, cut again until I get to the happy shape I want it. I actually go on and adjust the rear part of the grip a little bit more just to make it look a bit neater and a bit more practical too. I finished the handle with linseed oil. It came up quite good, I thought. Uh, it's quite good in my hand. I find it's quite comfortable and easy to control. Thanks for joining me on this video. Uh, I was quite happy with the way it came up. Um, needs a bit more linseed oil. It took probably about an hour and a half to two hours. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And 
please share with your friends. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.